In the last two episodes, we talked about building the forms for the side bending machine, and we talked about some of the essential items for bending sides using a side bending machine. And now, finally, in this episode, I'm going to demonstrate how to actually use a bender like this to bend your sides. I start by heating up a pot of water. The sides are going to be soaked in hot water to make the sides more pliable and less brittle. However, whether or not you do this is really going to depend on what species of wood you're using. Soaking certain woods, especially highly figured woods, can be disastrous. For these more difficult woods, usually just a spritz of water is more appropriate. So do your research first and determine if the wood that you're using needs to be soaked at all or if it should just be sprayed. I'm using sapili, which I know can stand a good soaking. While the water is heating up, I mark three things on my slat of sapili. I mark the waist and I mark where the seam at the upper bout and the seam at the lower bout are. To make this easy, I have a template with three marks on it and I just transfer them over. So now you need a container to soak the sides in. I used to use an old aquarium tank, but it was impractical to keep in the shop because it was heavy and difficult to stow away. So I switched to this cardboard box wrapped in plastic sheeting. Two weights keep the wood from floating to the surface and the cardboard beneath the weights just protects the wood from the weights. The weights tend to stain the wood and this whole thing soaks for 15 minutes. Then I wrap the side first in parchment paper and notice how I transfer the mark for the waste onto the parchment paper. Then I wrap the side in aluminum foil. Again I keep track of that waste mark and transfer it onto the aluminum foil. Now I place the side on one of the metal slats. I line up the waist with a small notch that I've cut into one of the metal slats. That way I can still locate the waist later after the sandwich is assembled simply by finding the small notch. Rather than trimming the loose ends of aluminum foil, I like to wrap those over the ends so that the wood is held in position on the metal slat and doesn't shift around. I add the thermal blanket and the other metal slat, and that completes the sandwich. I position the sandwich in the side bending machine and line up that small notch with the vertical slit in the side bending machine. This aligns the waist with the waist pressing shoe in the middle. I press down the waist shoe just enough to hold the sandwich in place. Then I clamp the whole sandwich together so that heat from the thermal blanket can get evenly distributed across the entire side. I place the meat thermometers on both sides of the waist because the waist is the most critical part of the bend. Now I plug in the temperature controller and away we go. I set the power to where I think it should be, knowing that I'm likely going to be adjusting the knob as I go. Now I watch the numbers on the meat thermometer begin to climb. I'm waiting for 212 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm also watching for steam and listening for a faint crackling sound. All of these indicate that the moisture is beginning to vaporize and that the wood is sufficiently warm and pliable. First I press the waist and then the upper and the lower bouts. With difficult woods I might only press the waist shoe three quarters of the way down then do the upper and the lower bouts, and then circle back to the waist shoe and bring it down the rest of the way.
Now I'm going to let this cook for about two or three minutes, keeping the temperature this whole time somewhere between 212 and 280 degrees. I don't want to just let the temperature keep rising up above 300 because then uh, you're really going to start scorching the wood. And after about two or three minutes, I shut it down and I unplug everything just to be sure. After this sits overnight, I can remove the side. The one thing you want to be a little bit cautious about when you're removing the side is the fact that the metal slats want to spring back to flat when you remove the pressure. This means that the lower slat, the one that's squished between the side and the form itself, that slat is going to want to put significant outward pressure on the now bent side. So my solution for this is just that I have a couple of springs and I've drilled a couple holes into that lower metal slat and those springs I hook into place before I start releasing all that pressure. And the springs don't completely hold that lower metal slat in place. It still springs back a little bit, but not nearly as much as it would if you just released all the pressure without um, holding it down with any type of springs. And there you have it, a perfectly bent side without any scorching using a side bending machine. If you learned something here, please give this video a like and subscribe so you can be notified when I release a new DIY guitar making video every Friday. And if you want to really learn more, take one of my structured online courses at ericschaferguitars.com or register for a hands-on guitar building workshop here with me in Burnville, Pennsylvania.